Hey guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modelling Bench. Welcome back to the channel. Yes, here it is, at last, our long-awaited Meng 135th scale Apache AH64D. And um, boy oh boy, we've been waiting for this. Why does it take so long for everything to get to the UK now? I remember Brett, Brett um, over at uh, High Altitude Scale Hobbies, or High Altitude Scale Modelling is his YouTube channel, he reviewed this kit, was it three, four months ago? And here we are now, four months later, and it's just come out in the UK. You know, great. Uh, my friend Andrew emailed me on Friday and said he'd got one and we were talking dogs and stuff and he said this kit was absolutely amazing so I couldn't resist, I had to go and order one. So here it is, today's Tuesday and it's on my bench. Um, this is an alternative to the Tacum kit. I have built the Tacum kit as you've seen, I got as far as the decals and that was that. And please, before you even think about getting on the keyboard, know the decals do not work with enamel thinners. Certainly in my kit they don't, okay? I'm an experienced modeler. I've been doing this for 54 years. I've made videos about removing carrier film using enamel thinners, and I can assure you those decals do not react to enamel thinners. They don't react to lighter fluid. They don't react to anything. You may as well rivet sheets of aluminium to your model and try and try and remove it with thinners. It's just they're not going anywhere. I'm going to have to dip the whole thing in thinners, I think, to get the decals off and just hope it doesn't get on the inside. But um, the model is quite possibly scrap because of it. Because of the raised rivets, I can't just sand them off. So, yeah. So please don't put in the comments about, I use the decals and I use this and that. I've tried everything that everyone suggested and nothing, nothing works. Even, you can even brush Tammy Extra Thin on them and it doesn't affect them at all. So, God only knows what they're made of. Anyway, this is, the, the, the Tacum kit is a beautiful kit. It's beautiful moulding, lovely detail. It's got a few bits and pieces missing. The instructions are absolutely awful and the decals are just throw them in the bin. They are total and utter shit. They are crap. So just there we go. That's that done. Um, hopefully they've done something about it. I would have thought they would have said to people, you know, contact us. We will replace the decal sheet or something. But no, nothing at all. And um, it's, I think it's absolutely disgusting that they put that rubbish in there. Especially on an £85 kit, whatever it was. So anyway, enough moaning. We've got this one here now. And this is said to be a lot better. Be interesting to see if it's got the couple of little... There's a couple of pieces in the cockpit that are missing on the Tacum kit. It'll be interesting to see if this has got them. Um, there's some rifles that should be in there that aren't in the Tacum kit. And most of all, I hope we've got better instructions. And I hope we've got a decent sheet of decals. So let's have a look. So front of the box, what's the kit number? It is QS004. It says it there, look. So going around the box, we've got some uh, CAD images, which I now... I, I wish they'd show us some images of the real model. Real model, Because um, you see, this could be... You know, it looks absolutely amazing. But if it's got ejector pin marks all over it, or bad fit or whatever, or soft edges, this won't show you that. This will show you perfection. So here we've got the interior. We have uh, the armaments there, and we have full engine detail which looks to be a little bit more complete than Tacum. Um, it looks like we have the rifles there, so that's good. That's the first good sign. And there should be some um, little units behind the, the seats that pick up up there. The I'm not sure what they're called, but they're, they, you know, the pilots could look through their helmets and see what they're aiming at and everything, and it's for them. So end of the box there is just basically the same artwork as the front. And then here we've got some information about the AX64 itself. And about the kit so you can stop there and, and freeze that and have a read should you want to and then here we've got another CAD image of the model and then here's some details about where it's made and everything so I haven't even opened this box at all so I wanted to enjoy it together with you guys so as normal these days with Meng we've got the uh, we've got the uh, competition thing here you can basically pick, take photos of your Meng model and send it to them and win so here we have a box which is pretty crammed with sprues, very much like the Tacom one. The box is slightly bigger than the Tacom one, I think, from memory. So we have uh, a sprue there, all individually bagged by the look of it. We have some very, very flexible parts here, but it's all good and not broken. You can see here that could be easily broken, but it's not. So there's one there. We've got two sprues in that bag. That's all looking good. There's one in there with a loose part floating around. I'm not sure if that's broken off. No, it's actually a loose part been put in there. We've got the rotor head details. 
cockpit. All looking very, very tack home like. It all looks exactly the same. Be interesting to see if the Red Fox kit will fit this. So there's the um, rotor there. There's our weapon sprue. We've got our little winglets and that there. Um, big chunk there. It looks like that's been done for slide moulding by the look of it. To get that rivet detail on there. With a bag of bits and pieces, we've got wheels, uh, weight on the tyres, we've got some very, very flimsy little bits and pieces there. I can't believe none of this is broken. I cannot believe it. We've got our little sponsons there. This does look very tack of light, doesn't it? It's almost like it's exactly the same kit. We'll have to do a comparison. But, um, slide moulded fuselage there, we've got all the detail on the top. Tire sprue right at the bottom. Oh dear. Hopefully it's not scratched. So it all looks okay, we'll put that there. And then here we've got decals facing up and all the sprues have dug in as you can see and made dents everywhere. Masks, very nice kabuki tape masks. We've got a, a tiny sheet of photo etch there. If that's all the photo etch, that's amazing. So it probably doesn't have seat belts then. And then here we've got a book which is sealed up in the bag. We could put that box to one side, and by first things first, we'll have a look in here. And in usual Meng style, they've actually put this this big thick, lovely instruction book, and then they've put this big thick. What's this? This is the colour call out by the look of it. So, hang on a minute. Just itchy eye. Um, so we've got four versions by the look of it. So we've got version A. Version B, bloody hell, so we've got version A, which is um, 975032 of A Company for 101st Airborne Division, Iraq 2003. So there's your plain green. And then here we've got 1st Cavalry Division, Iraq, March 2003. And then going over the page, we have version C, which is a Japanese tricolour camouflage. It's quite interesting, doesn't it? It doesn't give any dates or anything, or squadrons, but that's that. So there's three versions. And then we've got ABC common markings. So this is going to be all your stencil data. This is where the Takum kit falls over, unfortunately. Um, the decor placement guide is all wrong. The decals are wrong. Oh, and the decals are a mess. It's just terrible. Um, I think they rushed to get that kit out to beat this one, I think. And that's why. But the, the, the actual kit itself is beautiful. It is gorgeous. Um, but unfortunately, the the bits of the accessories, if you like, let it down big time. So, yeah, you can see we've got all our stencil detail here. Typical D-type exhausts. Um, with the, the rearward facing, the E has them facing up. And this has the uh, the tread plates on the top. So that's going to look very nice. The gun underneath. So there we go. So we've got three versions. Two Americans, one Japanese. And then here we've got the usual. This is what um, Meng put in. There's people out there that moan that the Chinese never give us any history or info on the actual aircraft itself. Which to intent, most intents and purposes is correct. Um, I mean if you look at uh, Trumpeter. They don't even tell you the bloody year the thing's from, let alone, you know, like here it's telling you exactly where it's from, you know, what, what division it's from, where it was, and the date. You know, trumpeter, none of that at all. It's just that, that. And then in the in the kit, it will, that won't have use this for version A, version B, it just says option. <laughs> you know, it's awful. But uh, I think many are a lot better than that. So here we have some history. Um, all about the uh, the aircraft in a load of different languages, so on those separate cards, and they they always do this. And I don't really know why. I don't know why they just put it in the instructions, but hey. So small instruction manual. So let's uh, let's zoom you in a bit. So a little bit of glossy paper here. So we'll turn that light down and uh, have a look at our lovely little instruction manual. So typical Meng. Let's zoom you back out because we're off the page. There we go. Uh, so typical Meng sort of layout, um, you've got here, you've got health and safety stuff, you know, don't stick fingers in your ears and mind your eyes. 
Uh, and here we've got some hints and tips about building it. They're telling us about removing sprue gates here. I like sprue gates. Uh, Z pins from the ejector pins. And that is uh, something Meng are well known for. And then here we've got deco placement guide, recommended tools. And there we go. So you've got three versions, A, B and C. And what we'll have in the instructions, it will tell us going through, it will say use this for version A, use this for version B. And straight away, if you're thinking about getting this or the Tacom, straight away get this because the instructions are simpler, and clearer and they're better drawn. So looking at this, it looks much, much better. And they're giving you, you know, how the, um, how the sticks should look and everything while they're in there. But uh, on the whole, obviously it's a 35th scale Apache. It looks very much like the Tacom kit. Uh, I doubt that it is the same kit, but um, it could be, who knows. But here we go, all the uh, separate instrument panels going in there, um, control sticks and everything going in, and then we've got our cyclics going in there, or whatever you call them. And then seats being built up with the armour on the sides, we've got the gun rack, oh no, that's the, um, that's the ejector mechanism for the back, isn't it? Do they have ejector seats? I'm not sure, I think they do. Um, no, they can do, can they? they? They go through the rotor blades. Uh, that, I'm not sure what that is, but it's there. Uh, and then we've got the forward control here for the uh, for the gunner up front. So that's that. Um, and I'm just looking, and it looks like they have actually missed. Yes, they have. I don't believe this. Tacom was months ahead of this kit, and everybody talked about how they missed out these little sensors that go in the cockpit. They sit here, 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 and here. And, they just, and they're very, very prominent. And they sit there looking over the shoulders of the pilots. And, uh, yeah, not there. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, we've got the um, Do Not Grab decal going on there, which is actually in the Tacom kit, but they don't call it up in the instructions. So if you are building the Tacom one, have a look on your decal sheet. It's not called up anywhere. There's a couple of decals that say Do Not Grab. They go on the side of the console there. Okay, so um, here we are. And then building up the actual rotor head itself, again, beautifully laid out, much better than the Tacom one. Took me forever to try and work this out. In fact, I made a video all about how to put together. And no, certainly, I saw at least one kit was built and they just left it all out. So uh, we've got the main rotor shaft going in there. And look at how you're doing this. Make sure you know where you're going so that you can actually remove the rotor head. You know, don't glue something and then the rotor head will come off. And then here it's going all together telling us to drill some holes. We've got the internal panel going in there, which the Tacom kit was laid out for, but that wasn't actually in there. So you can have these panels open should you wish. Um, and going through it's telling us for versions A, B and C, what to drill and what not to drill, which is all very nice. And then the fuselage halves are coming together. And there's the rotor head bit. Uh, that piece was a piece of was photo etch in the Tacom kit. There's not a lot of photo etching. This is just those two little bits, bits and pieces, those bits for the spine, isn't it? And then we've got little winglets going together, a belly going on. And then we're fitting the sponsons. It's interesting because the Tacom kit, you had to get the undercarriage in with it, didn't you? Because it was all a bit awkward. And we've got colour callouts for these open open areas. You had these open areas in the Tacom kit, but um, I chose to close mine up. If you do choose to close yours up, you need to remove some detail from here because the door won't go on properly otherwise. And there we go. Bits and pieces going on there. Some little bits and pieces going on here. And then we've got our engine. So we're building two engines up. Got a little gearbox there. Gearbox going on top of the engine. Some pipe work going around and we're building up our exhausts. Um, I would have thought they would have had photo etch on the top of them, but nope, it's all plastic. So it'll be interesting to see how that looks. Did I just see some photo etch there? Nope, plastic parts. Interesting to see the, the limited use of photo etch, which is, uh, which is nice in a way, it's refreshing. Um, and then we're doing the same on here, on the other side, and then fitting the intakes to the fronts of the engines, and then fitting the engines up onto our actual, uh, onto the actual fuselage, and you have the option here of having the doors open. Be interesting to see if they've got ejector pin marks in there the separate panels so they probably won't and then here it's telling us to mask up our clear parts we've got this oxygen hose here 
this is much better. They're telling us to build this up like this, which is how it should have been done in the Tacom kit. And then you've got this oxygen hose, which is going into those holes rather than a piece of wire, which is much, much better. So that's lovely. Um, they don't appear to have the exit ducts. There should be air ducts on that pipe facing down, which they don't appear to have added. And they're quite prominent, especially if the doors open. So that's something else to add. Got your do not grab sign going on there again. Got the choice here of having them shut or open. And then building up this upper gearbox cover here. So it's telling us all what colours to paint and everything. And then we've got our um, nose mounted electro optical equipment. So I'm not sure if we've got options for different ones. It looks like we don't have that. With the Tacom kit you had options for different different setups. But this is all the same when look of it. Yes, it's all you just get the one setup. You get a different you get a choice of different displays on the Tacom kit. Adding our wipers in, adding in this armor plate on the nose, and then adding our undercarriage, putting on the wheels. Looks like we don't get the option to have an in-flight display, you only get the flat spotted wheels. Building up the gun, going into its frame, we've got the ammo belt there, which is made up in three parts, so you get the detail, which is much nicer. The Tacom kit has a rubber piece, it's horrible. Um, so that's all going to go in from underneath. Is the gun movable? Yes. So it goes through there, and then you put that panel in. So that's nice, because with the other kit, you only get the option of putting the gun in early on, or you just glue it in afterwards and have it fixed. So tail wheel going in, tail plane going on. Um, this is the photo etch. These are going to go down the... Oh no, these are going on, the... they're not going on the top. I thought we had photo etch strips going along the top of the fuselage, but they don't appear to. So these are for the tail plane. Little spoilers. Here we go, we do have photo etch. Little photo etch ridges along the top there. So uh, very nice. All the little grab handles going on. It's a much more sensibly laid out instruction manual here. With the other kit, you, you're, you're putting all this flimsy little stuff on right back at the beginning and you really don't want to be doing that. And also they've got those daft little photo etch covers on the little 3D printed legs that go on and everything. It's also fragile and flimsy and fussy. This one doesn't appear to have that. And then we've got our pylons going together, and then we've got our uh, arms going on. You choice whatever arms you're going to use. They are giving you... Um, is that... Is that for version C? Or is that weapons option C? Not sure. You'll have to do your research and uh, look into that. I'm not sure if they're referring to version C, which is the Japanese one, uses this. I think, I think that's what they're saying. So the Americans are going to have this and the Japanese are going to have this. I think that's what they're saying. Um, and then we've got the big uh, unit going on top of the rotor head here. So you may, you, may control, you may wish to put that on or not. It's up to you. They didn't all have it. And you're building up the rotors here. Got the uh, rotor gear going in there into the main head. And then over the page, dropping all this on, no cement, and then you can just lift that off and, and fit it as you like. A little bit of a disappointment, they're not giving you the option to not use the radar, so you can only have the radar on there, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, and then here you can have the rotor blades assembled in their folded position, so they're telling you to cut off some pins and stuff, um, rather than use a separate rotor head. And then you can have the rotor blades all folded, uh, you're just going to fit the rotor head on there. You've got these guards going over the exhaust. And then they're giving you the framework there to support the, the rotor blades. And then going over the page, you're going to add the rotor blades, put them into the folded part. Tail rotor going together there. And then a few little greeblies going on. Nice little flimsy parts right at the end. Nice one, man. Well laid out. Well thought out. And there we go. So there is basically... Your kit, so here's your sprue call out. So you've got all the plastic parts there. You've got one tiny sheet of photo etch, one great big decal sheet, little bits and pieces, and some poly caps. So basically, on the whole, a much better instruction manual at first glance. Um, 
a much better thought out building process and a much simpler build by the look of it because you don't have all those little tiny bits of photo etch and things that I talked that I mentioned before. So we'll have a look at the clear parts. Um, these are the stapled bag, which is yuck. I'll get this bag open and I'll come back. Okay, toughest staples on the planet. I'm going to get this open very carefully. I'm going to remove this main piece here because it's about to break off. What I don't want it to do is break off and leave a great big mark through there. So I'm going to cut that away. There we go. So we can keep that to one side. But that's the actual main, that's the main canopy part. And again, that's painted green up there, so it's not so important, but uh, we'll get that off anyway. So this is our main canopy part, and as you can see, it's beautifully clear. Put some writing behind it, and then you can see it's very, very clear and pretty much distortion-free. But also you can see it's one piece, and uh, I can tell you from experience that tacon kit, oh, God, getting all this to fit was a nightmare. And uh, certain people, it went straight in, certain people had all sorts of issues and there's so much depending on how this fits it's just crazy it's very very difficult so uh, this kit will be built by built and loved by many I'm sure but um yeah very very nice indeed very very clear and beautifully molded rivet detail and everything on there so yeah really really nice that and then the rest of it is all beautifully done it's so notice all the single ejection injection points so you don't get the um, the spidering in there. But you can see here they've got two injection points on that part and managed to get no spidering. So it is possible. Um, but yeah, little bits and pieces, little lights. Another, there's a size here that you can have open or closed. But, um, all in all, beautifully done. So I'm going to put that there. We'll put over there to one side. I'll put the other clear part on top of it so none of that gets damaged right let's have a look at the decals we've got a stapled bag again right worth remembering guys if you do keep your stash in the loft or in the shed or whatever remember this bag is not sealed so if you do keep your, your kits anywhere where they're going to get damp take the instructions and the um, decals out of the out of the kit so they don't get ruined um, so Photo etch is there, very small photo etch set. So you can see on here, we've basically got those two little um, trim, trim tabs for the rear of the, uh, the uh, elevator or stabilator it's called, I think. And then here we've got the, the little fairings for the top. I'm not sure what that bit there is for, but uh, see that all there? So there's your photo etch all done. I've been doing a little playing around lately with um, trying to etch brass to make the paint stick better. And uh, at the moment I'm doing some experiments with Viacal, which is actually um, for removing uh, calcium, built up calcium from kitchen taps and stuff. And it seems to be working really well. So uh, something worth looking at. I tried white vinegar and it doesn't seem to attack it at all. Uh, so here we have our masks, beautifully done on a sheet of plastic. So you can see there you don't even have to peel, them, peel the excess off, you can just use them as they are. So very nicely done. And then here we have our decal sheet. And as you can see, I mean, it's not too bad on this one, but I don't know if I can catch it in the light. You can see around the middle here, there's all dents and dings in it from where they put the, the sprues in on top, which is <laughs> annoying. But uh, printed by Cartograph, made in Italy. So if only Takum had done the same, they would end up with a beautiful kit. We've got all our stencil data there. We've got so This is all for the weapons, for the Japanese one by the look of it. And then this is all going to be for the version B, I'm guessing. Um, no, this is going to be versions A, version B. This looks like the Japanese stuff, version C. And then this is all going to be version A and B armaments. And this is common to all of them, I'm guessing. And then we've got some, um, some stenciling here. We've got inert labels for the, uh, for the weapons. Deckle sheet's a bit creased up on the corner there, but hey-ho. Um, I've got decals for the uh, for the frames around the windows. All in all, it's cartographed. They're going to be lovely. They're going to be a million percent better than the um, the rubbish that Tacom gave us. 
absolutely worst decals ever, I'm afraid. There we go, and it's not just me saying that. I'm going to put those away now, so they don't get damaged, or any more damaged than they already are. So they can go over there. Right, let's have a look at some plastic. So we'll start off with these fuselage halves. We've got staples again, but I'm not too worried about just ripping the bags open now. They're bloody tough bags. I hate stapled bags. Right, the risk here is you be so careful as you pull the parts out and the staple will get hold of a piece of detail and rip it off. That's what you've got to be careful of. So it's always best to get the staples completely out. Right, so here we have our fuselage halves. And I can tell you now it's not the Tacum kit because the Tacum kit was covered in little bits and pieces and this isn't. And also I think the Tacum kit was hollow here, wasn't it? So they haven't shared tooling. The riveting is gorgeous and consistent. It must be slide molded, but I can't see Wow. Now, I don't know if you can see this. Because I'm struggling. Let's get the light back up bright again. This is slide molded and there's a mould seam. You can see the mould seam there. Where it doesn't matter. And it goes along here. It's, it's, it's beautiful. Really nice. Um, oh, okay, I can feel it. It just... You just need a tiny little scrape of the blade and it will be gone. But, um, you know, it's like people will say, oh, yeah, but you said that Tamiya kit had sink marks and this is OK. Yeah, the Tamiya, the Tamiya kit's got sink marks because it's got bad processing. This has got a line in there because they've gone to the trouble of giving the slide moulding to get the rivet detail on the bottom edge. So the seam there that needs to be dealt with is a result of them slide moulding it, which... If it hadn't done, we wouldn't have this detail on here. So I'm happy to deal with that in exchange for having the detail on the bottom. Uh, I do try and look at all the models I do. I try and look at them all through the same eyes and not have any preference or anything. But uh, you can he he see here they've got the seam there going up and that's going to be covered by the sponsons. So that's cool. But um, yeah, very, very nice indeed. They've even gone to the trouble of getting rid of the ejector pin marks in here, which you're hardly going to see. But yeah, it's um, it's pretty chunky as well. It's, it's nice plastic, very nice. But uh, yeah, the raised the raised rivet detail on there is is absolutely gorgeous. As is the Tacum. The Tacum kit is beautiful. But I like the way they've got these bits and pieces moulded on, rather than give you a stupid little bit of bloody photo etch to glue on. And that seems to be the way a lot of these. The, the Chinese kits are going, they seem to be just adding more and more photo etch, which is, it's it's great, but, you know, just just mould it on. You don't need to use photo etch. Um, and I'm looking here, I mean, we don't seem to have all the vents and everything that the other one has. So that's a bit strange. Like the other, I remember the other one had all these photo etch vents going here, and then if you remember, there was all those covers sat on those, um, yeah sat on those little 3D printed legs. But this is very nice indeed. Very nice indeed. Nice one, mate. Lovely job. So we'll put that away so they don't get damaged. I wouldn't worry about them, but the raised rivet detail, if you start chucking sprues on top of it and stuff, you can start to damage your raised rivet detail. We've got the sponsors here. We've got more bloody staples. Ugh. Dear, dear, dear. Toughest bags in the world. Okay, so we've got the sponsons here. Little bits and pieces there. There's a staple. So that's the belly. Beautifully done. Again, all the raised rivet detail on there. Which is nicely done. And that's going to sit inside there like that. Okay, just like on the second kit. And then we've got the, uh, the detail here. We're going to have innards to put in there. If you want to have it exposed. If not, just put the door on. Um, got the grills here. Again, they've moulded it. You don't have all that silly photo etch to put in there. So that's all very nice. 
I would say if you're newer to the hobby and you don't like photo etching everything, this will be a far better bet for you than the other one. And then there's this bit here. This is the front of the uh, tail rotor. This goes up on up on the top there. And that's where the tail rotor is going to sit. They make that separate because the different versions have different bits there. So, um, yeah, lovely. Very nice indeed. So that can all get put back in its bag. I must admit, guys, I'm not a fan of having all this rattling around in the same bag. So if you're buying this from a model shop, you know, open the box and have a look. Ask, ask the owner. And because if all, all this is rattling around in there, it could be that some of this external detail could have been damaged. But uh, it's just worth having a look before you get home. Um, so here we have some cellophane bags now with welded seams, which is much better. So there we go. So two sprues in here. It looks like they're identical, so we'll just get the one out. So on here, this is sprue L. So we've got our lovely flat spotted wheels and they do look very nice indeed. There's no lettering on the tyres, but uh, hey ho. There's the top of the exhausts with the, with the tread plate on them. We've got the tail rotor there. Obviously there's two pieces to the tail rotor. Little actuators. Got some um, detail there for the seat mountings. Very nicely done indeed. I'm just looking there. Is that? Oh no, that's redder pedals. I was wondering if that was the bits I thought were missing. It could be there in the kit and they're not in the instructions, you never know. Um, but uh, yeah, some lovely detail, some tread plate there for on top of the engine. This is all your engine detail here. You've got the seat with the, the creased up cushion, and the actual seat itself with the armour around it. Jetra pin mark down in there, which just have to be get rid of. Got the pylons there for your weapons. All more engine detail. Very, very nicely done. Very crisp, very clean, no flash, no real big seam lines to speak of. But, uh, yeah, you can see close up the wheel detail on there. It's uh, it's lovely, it's very nice indeed. And there's the, the tread plate on top of the exhaust, moulded on rather than having the photo etch. I'm not sure actually in that situation if it would have been better to have the photo etch because I'm not sure if, if the, the, the plate goes on the top and you see the exhaust underneath it it should be hollow and it's moulded as one, I'm not sure. But um, I'm sure that's correct actually, because I'm, I'm, Meng would have, if they'd have needed photo etch, they would have put photo etch there, I'm sure. So that's sprue L, there's two of those. And those rotor, rotor blades, are, the tail rotor blades, are lovely, look at the detail on them, on the, on the root of the blade. Very nice. So, overall, Bunnies of happiness. Another bag here with two sprues in. And these are different, so we'll look at both of them. So we've got here, we've got our little sponsons going on. It's got upper and lower. It looks like the leading edge is a separate part. Again, slide molded so you get all the rivet detail on there. There's your little cap going on the back there of the fuselage. So this is obviously sprue C is going to be one that's replaced for different versions because you've got different backs. And I thought that was the little plates to go on the front, but it's not. There's a little pylon or something there. There's the plates to go on the front. And there's a door there. All very nicely done. And then here we've got a weapon sprue. It's so got rocket launchers there with rockets in them. Um... Strange. We'll have a look through the kit. Yes, we have. I was, I was just looking. We've got the rocket launchers, the backs there with the rockets in them, by the look of it. And they've got here. You've got the fronts open, but we do. I can see on another sprue over there. We do have the options of having the rounded noses or the pointed rockets sticking out. And then we've got all our weapons and everything there. So uh, beautifully done. Tiny little bits of moulding on the sides there. I can't believe none of this has got damaged. It's incredible. When you think it's all just chucked in bags, it's absolutely amazing. So, uh, there we go. Very, very nicely done. The reason I'm putting these away, guys, is because they've, they've all got these tiny, tiny little bits on them. And 
get the sprues rubbing together like that with, without bags, you're going to start catching bits and start breaking stuff. I just need to get to my phone a sec. Okay, so there we are. So we've got our rotors here. Are these sprues identical? No, they're not. Yes, yes, they are. Yes, they are. Right, so two identical sprues here. So we've got all our bits of our rotor head here. Here's the um, alternative rocket front faces I was talking about. So they're going to go in behind the uh, behind the hold parts. Door there for the fuselage. Very, very nice indeed. I think that's the Japanese weapons there. Very nicely done. And you can see the blades have like a They have a very weird, you can see it in there, if I catch it in the light. So they have lines along them that tend to move with the light. It's almost like a kaleidoscope or something, it's weird. Very strange. It's tiny little legs moulded onto them there, look. But very crisply moulded, very clean. You can see the detail down there on the root. It's very nice. Hmm. Beautiful kit, this isn't it? It is a beautiful kit. But again, you need to be very careful with your sprues because there are so many little tiny bits and pieces sticking out everywhere. There we go. Some little loose parts there. So here's our cockpit interior. Ooh, look at that. <gasps> look at that there. Bit of flash. Oh my god. Tell you what, there we go, it's gone. <laughs> um, side panels here with all the quilting in there, instrument panels. As I said, it'd be interesting to see if the Red Fox kit will fit this. It should do, if both the kits are accurate. So very nice indeed. Side panels there. They've obviously done all these bits separately and then they can make alternative cockpits then. Because the D and E have got differences. There's those machine guns that are missing from the Takum kit. They're going to add to the cockpit beautifully. Just sat there next to the two, um, two crew. There's another bit of flash there. Look. Look at that. Look at that one there. Blame me. So, yeah. All in all, it's very nice. It definitely needs a wash. It's quite oily and I can see traces of oil here as well. It's um, release agent. Yeah, beautiful. And then here's, I'm assuming this is an ordnance. I'm assuming. So they're just loosely sat in there rubbing around. So again, not the best way of doing things, but it's obviously been okay on this kit. So here we have sprue F. So there is our main rotor head. You can see the detail on there. Main shaft. Bits and pieces of detail on the rotor head. A lot, set, a lot more sensible than the Takum kit. All done in sort of one piece rather than all these separate little parts that was very difficult to put together. So um, the end result would be the same. It's just you've got less parts. So yeah, very nice. But, um, here we go. And don't get me wrong, guys. If you're a modeler of experience... Um, and you can handle the instructions and you've got a set of aftermarket decals, the Tacom kit is quite possibly better than this. Uh, but as far as just you know building a 135th Apache, I think this is by far the better option, particularly for the newer modeler or the modeler that doesn't like photo etch. So yes. Very nice indeed. Here we have, this is sprue E, so there's our spine there, made as a separate piece, all the rivet and hinge detail you can see on there, beautifully done, and then here's the engine covers and the internal details there, so we do have some ejector pin marks here, but I think those
those go inside there, I believe. But there is, there is, a, no, they go in there, don't they? They go in there, and this is the bottom. So you, you'd have to get rid of those ejector pin marks there because they'll be seen. But um, those there will be covered up by these these panels here. So that's all very nice. There's the top of the fuselage there. Intakes. Hmm. Very nicely done. A little bit of flash on there. A tiny bit of flash on the seam line. But, uh, all in all, lovely, isn't it? Getting towards the end now. So here we have. These are our stabilators. So there's the stabilators. Again, we've got these little uh, parts moulded on the back. And we've got all the detail there for the avi avionics bays. And again here, more detail. You've got some weapons there for the gun. Or some rounds, should I say. And there's the, the floor of the upper area. I'm not exactly sure what these bits here are, but they, this one has river detail, this one doesn't. That's going on the bottom there. And here's the ends of the uh, sponsons with the little, again they've got those little bits on the back, be very careful not to snap them off. So yeah, again lovely, very crisp and clean raised detail and everything so very accurate for a for a 35th scale helicopter we've got some cable cutters here is that parts of the undercarriage there or parts of the that's parts of that's the tail the tail wheel isn't it we've got our exhausts again two halves you have some seam work to do on there and there's the covers that go over them again with that um, grill on there You've got the main undercarriage legs, supports for the main undercarriage legs. And then here's your forward looking stuff there. But as, as it's just everything here is very, very crisp and clean. There's your nose part there. You see this in the tacking kit, that's molded in clear because there's a couple of lenses in there which they haven't included. So it's sort of, it's a kind of simplified Hit this compared to the Tacom. Um, I was expecting it to be a bit more, you know, a bit more detailed, but uh, I think for the actual detailed freaks out there, I think the Tacom is the better bet. So, oh, that's bloody staples again. But certainly for the newer modelers, as I keep saying, this is by far the better bet. By far. Oh, come on. So here we have really flimsy little parts. So there's our little rail that goes along the back of the fuselage there. I can't believe that hasn't got broken. We've got the uh, main antenna there which is going on top of the tail. We've got all our gun support here, wiper blades. Lots and lots of tiny little greeblies. That looks like the parts of the tail rotor support there. And then you've got the, uh, the ammo for the gun very cleverly moulded in three pieces so they can get the detail all the way around and uh, yeah very very nice indeed more there's the blade supports there and then some poly caps and that my friends is that so yeah what a beautiful beautiful little model um, very very nice indeed and as I say if you get it from a model shop, ask, ask the owner if you can have a look. Check your clear sprue's not damaged because it is right at the bottom of the box. Check your decals aren't damaged because they're right at the bottom of the box facing up. Check your masks aren't all damaged. And also check all those little bags with the loose bits flying around. And make sure none of your raised detail has been rubbed off. Um, but all in all, uh, it's, a, it's a lovely, lovely kit. As I say, I was expecting it to be as good, if not better, than the Tacom. And I think as far as the actual kit itself goes, I don't think it's as good as the Tacom for the detail. Um, as a buildable plastic model, this is miles ahead of the Tacom. But 
for the actual detail, the finished result, I think the Tycoon is the better bet. Uh, but as I say, the instructions and the decals, just forget it. So um, there we go. Very, very nice indeed. Well worth the money. Uh, but if you want to get a 35th scale Apache, I'm sure there's going to be some very cheap Tacom ones on eBay very, very soon. Because a lot of people are completely put off by the, um, the decals and the instructions and they will sell them off to get themselves one of these. So um, keep your eyes peeled. You might find a cheap one. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all soon. Um, I'm sorry if this review hasn't been maybe up to my usual sort of review standards. But there's a lot of stuff going on in my life at the moment and uh, plastic models are not really a major interest right now. So um, I will tell you more as time goes on and uh, we'll see how things pan out. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.